Hey, Way family, thank you for tuning in. God has an amazing word for you, so go ahead and check out this message. And after, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We love you. God bless. You guys, if you can, let me get your Bibles out, your notepads, your phones, however you take notes. And I always encourage you when you come to the house of God, um, no matter who's speaking, try to get a notepad. Um, the reason why, there's only a certain amount of information you'll actually keep, you'll remember. But when you write it down, it'll stick with you longer. And they say it takes about seven or eight times hearing something over and over and over until we really get it and it goes into our memory. So yeah, get, grab a notepad, you need a paper, maybe talk to someone next to you, but get a phone out. So we're in a series right now that's entitled Access Granted. Somebody say that on a count of three. One, two, three. Say it again. One, two, three. The reason why I'm having you declare that because sometimes the enemy will lie to us and he'll tell us that we're defeated. He'll tell us that we're going we're gonna to stay bound to this addiction. But I don't know about you, Jesus Christ is in my life. And when Jesus comes into my life, he sets the captives free. So we're in a series, Access Granted. Pastor Marco did part one and two. I'm going to give you part three. Last week, he talked about key number one, how to get granted to the kingdom of God and the things of heaven. Let me review for a couple of minutes. Access Granted, write down this definition. It means this, the right or privilege to approach. Access Granted, this is what it means, the right or privilege to approach. Means to reach. It means to enter or make use of something. To make accessible or available. It's the privilege to approach, to reach out, to enter. Access granted. Pretty soon in the next couple of months, this building will be under the name of the Way World Outreach. Access has been granted. Not only will this building be in our name, I'm going to declare right now, we're buying this, million for, we're buying this building for $8 million. We're going to put a few million dollars down payment. And I believe access has been granted so we could pay this building off in the next couple of years. How many believe in debt-free living? How many would love their house to be paid off? Stand up if you own a house and you got a mortgage right now. Stand up really quick. We're going to activate some things right now. I just texted a few of my friends yesterday, and I just, I just wrote it down, and I texted a few of my friends, and I told them my house is going to be paid off in the next year, next two years, the next three years. I'm just declaring it right now. I don't know if it's going to be two years or three years, but access has been granted. We had a team that went to Mexico. We were talking about that. We're talking about that God has allowed us and has access so we could be debt free. And I believe it starts with me and it starts with Pastor Marco. It starts with our leaders and then it flows down to the church. The credit cards and things you may, 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 may have. And God is saying, you already have access. Raise your hand if you have a mortgage. You said, I want this house paid off. I want God to, to do a miracle there. I want to be a better steward of my finances. And God, our hands are raised to you. My hands are raised with them today because I have a mortgage, God. And I'm praying, Lord, that we will be debt free. Our houses will be paid off in the name of Jesus. And as we, the leaders and the team of the Wayroad Outreach, as we, you begin to take care of our business, God, and we, and we trust in you, God, it falls to the church. It falls to the city. This spirit of poverty, we are binding out of San Bernardino, out of our lives, out of our family, because, Lord, access has been granted. So we receive a debt-free living. Help us to be better stewards with our money. Help us to be better stewards with our money. God, we thank you. We receive it today. We will be debt free in the name of Jesus. We're buying this building. This building will be debt free. Arrowhead Campus will be debt free. The EC building across the street will be debt free. We're going to pay off our men's home. We're going to pay off our women's home. And we're going to pay off our women's and children's home. God, we thank you because access has been granted. If you believe that, give the Lord a big shout of praise. I 
want you to slap three people and tell them access has been granted. I don't want to make payments on this building until I'm 80 years old. I'll be 42 in two days. That was a little sidebar, little sidebar birthday, two, two years. And I don't want to be paying this bill until I'm 80. And God is saying that access has been granted. Write this down. Just a review for a couple of minutes. Here's really the top three goals of why we're covering this message, why God has us covering access granted. Goal number one for this message is to make us aware that there is a spiritual dimension that we have access to. We're doing this message and God has us declaring this because we have to understand there's a spiritual dimension that we have access to. Romans 14, 17 says it like this, for the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. It's not merely a thing of Eden. It's not a physical thing. The kingdom of God is a spiritual thing. We can receive joy when all hell's breaking loose in our lives. We can have a peace that surpasses all understanding. That's the spiritual realm. How many want to live and operate in the spiritual realm? I know we're here in the carnal. I know we got bills and I know we have jobs, but we can operate in the spiritual realm. We can get access to the kingdom of heaven. I like this statement. The kingdom of heaven is accessible to every single one of us. Write that down. The kingdom of heaven is accessible to every single one of us. What does that mean? We have access to God's peace. We have access to his forgiveness doesn't matter what you've done. You have access to forgiveness today. We have access to freedom today. You don't have to smoke another cigarette. You don't have to drink another beer. You can receive free freedom tonight. How many believe we serve a God of freedom? You have access to that. You have access to his power. Lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. We have strength. We have access to supernatural strength. We have access to healing and miracles and provision. We have access to God's wisdom, God's joy, God's salvation and eternal life. We have access to another dimension. I remember a really quick story really fast I'll share with you. We were trying to cast out a demon years back, me and Pastor Marco, and it was taking a little while. I forgot who it was. And we were trying to cast out this demon. And this demon was hard-headed. And we were saying, get out! And this person was experiencing a little freedom, but me and Pastor Marco were looking at each other. We said, nah, they're, 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 there's still a deep root there. So talk about the spiritual realm. We're there, we're looking at each other. So what do we do next? Because during this time, the church had just started, and we were getting trained on deliverance. We had never went to any classes on deliverance. So we're just practicing scripture and being led by the Holy Spirit. And how many know being led by the Holy Spirit is the best? So we were there, like, okay, what do we do now? We said, well, you got to come out in Jesus' name. We, we command the angels. And I remember when we said this. We said, we command the angels right now to come down and fight with us. Now, we didn't have a clue what we were saying. We just, we thought it sounded good. I, I know there's angels. There's angels in this room right now. We can't see them. So I know there were angels there. We said, angels, get this demon out. And all of a sudden, this person looks, and he kind of looks past me and Pastor Marco, and he starts seeing the spiritual realm. And the person looked, and he got real scared. He started, like, shivering. And I, we asked the person, what are you looking at? I want to know what you're seeing. And this is what the person said. The ropes of deliverance are here. The angels, there's angels here, and they brought the rope of, ropes of deliverance. I had never heard of that in my life. But we had tapped into a spiritual realm. And we asked, we, we, we asked a demon, what are, those, what are those ropes here to do? And the demon said, well, those ropes are here to get me out and take me to the pit. Yeah. 
Man, that sounded good. We actually call the angels and they were there with the golden ropes of deliverance. It's a realm that's more real than me and you sitting here right now. Because it's eternal. We're going to be here for a while. We're like vapor. We're gone. We're talking about the eternal side. So we said the, the, the ropes of deliverance is here. Well, let's just do it, angels. So me and, Pat, me and Pastor Marco looked at each other. So let's just get, have the angels get this demon out with the golden ropes of deliverance. So we said, okay, in the count of three, angels, we're just having fun with the kingdom of God now. I said, I said, dude, you're in trouble, man. Here we go. The angels are here with the golden ropes of deliverance. And we said, in the count of three, angels, bind this spirit and cast it to the pit like you said. One, two, three. And all of a sudden, this, this guy gets hogtied. And he gets down like this. His feet go up and his hands go up. And the demons just start coming out of him. And I said, glory be to God. The angel showed up. God showed up. I'm here to tell you tonight, we have access granted to the kingdom of heaven. We don't operate in this system. Doesn't matter how the economy is doing in America. I don't operate on America's economy. I operate from the kingdom of heaven economy. That's why we could buy a building right now in the middle of a city where there's poverty because we're not bound by poverty that's across this city or across this nation. We have access to heaven. Look at your table, look at your neighbor and tell him, you don't know me, I got access to heaven, man. And tell them, if you don't watch it, I'll get those ropes of deliverance on you. And I'm just. I'll get those ropes on you, man. Why are we studying this? We have a spiritual dimension. Goal number two, write this down. Why are we studying this topic? It's to remind us that Jesus suffered and died to make God and all his blessings accessible to us. It's to remind us that Jesus suffered and died to make God and all his blessings accessible to us. Matthew 27, 51. And behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And the earth shook, shook and the rocks were split. When Jesus Christ died, the curtain that was in the temple got split in half. We do not just have to go through a priest anymore to have access to Jesus. We don't have to go through a man to get to Jesus. I could get to Jesus all by myself. Yes, we have church, and yes, we have pastors, and yes, we have teachers, but we can go to God. You don't got to wait to get delivered on Sunday when you can get delivered on Thursday in your kitchen. You can just come to church on Sunday and say, Pastor, I got delivered in my kitchen this, this Thursday. My wife laid hands on me because we got access to the kingdom and demons came out of me right there in the kitchen. Why? Because you have access to the kingdom of God. Why are we studying this? Is to get our minds, is to get our minds off our lack and focus on our unlimited heavenly source. I'm going to say that again. Why are we studying this topic on access granted? It's to get our minds, it's to get my mind, your mind off our lack and focus on our unlimited heavenly source. How many know with God there are no limits? It's unlimited resources. Philippians 4.19, and my God, and my God will supply every need, and my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Who supplies our needs? Oh, we could do better than that. Who supplies our needs? Who supplies our needs? God supplies our needs. Access granted here. You have availability to unlimited resources, unlimited joy, unlimited peace. Now, Pastor Marco tapped on something last week, and I'll just say key number one, if you weren't last week, key number one, to have this access, key number one is repent. The first way to have access to the kingdom, Pastor Marco mentioned it last week, repent. 
Repent, what does that mean? To change one's mind for the better. A turning from one's sins with a feeling of deep regret and remorse for doing wrong or causing pain. Matthew 4, 17 says this, from that time Jesus began to preach, crying out, repent, change your mind for the better. Heartily amend your ways with adherence of your past sins, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The first key to have access is repentance. God, I am a sinner. I have made mistakes, Jesus. I do stuff that is wrong. I have done stuff that is wrong, and I repent for my sins, and we turn from our wicked ways to follow Jesus Christ. Pastor Marco said this last week, after repentance comes receiving. After repentance comes receiving. After repentance comes transformation. So the first key to have access is what, church? What's the first key? Now, let me give you key number two. How many want key number two? Here's key number two. Write this down. Key number two is believe. We have to repent, and now we have to believe. Mark chapter 1, verse, it, verse 15. Mark 1, 15. And saying, the time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. I'm going to say this again. The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Repentance is not enough. We also need to believe. So we repent and then we do what? We repent and then we do what? We believe. Believe in the scripture means this, to think to be true, that Jesus is the way, that Jesus is the Messiah, that Jesus is the only way to heaven, to be persuaded of, to place confidence in. It means to trust in Jesus or God as able to aid either in obtaining either in obtaining or doing something. Believe, to put our trust in Jesus, to put our trust in God. See, the devil's number one responsibility is to take your faith. The devil's number one highest responsibility is to steal your faith, to get you not to believe in God. To get you to not to believe that Jesus is the only way, the truth, and the life. The devil's out to steal your faith that that situation is not going to turn around. That that person you're praying for is not going to turn around. For that sickness not to leave. He's there to rob you of your faith. Because once the devil robs you of your faith, it's impossible to serve God. It's impossible to get access. It comes to repenting and believe in. I like this, this statement. Just because you can quote the Bible, it doesn't mean you actually believe it. That's a great statement, isn't it? Just because you can quote all the scriptures, it doesn't really mean you, can, you actually believe what it says. I believe in Philippians 4.13 that I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. Say that on the count of three, I can do all things. I just, I just like hearing the, the crowd cheer. Uh, I can do all things. One, two, three. Oh, you're saying the whole scripture. <laughs> Michael, I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. I can do all things. Yeah, I can do all things. I can take over a city through Christ Jesus. Yeah. I can take over San Bernardino. I can take over Baseline. We could take over Tijuana, Mexico. We could take, take over Medford, Orient, because I could do all things through Christ Jesus. I can heal the sick. I can cast out demons. I can do all things through Christ Jesus. How many believes they can do all things? 
Yeah. What would our lives actually look like, Pastor Todd, if we really believed that we could do all things? If we really believe that, if we really believe that, how would your life look? If you really believe I could do all things, well, you would start that business. Some of you guys, God has told you to start a business, and the devil lies. Well, you can't start a business. You don't have the education. You don't got the money. You don't got this. You don't got that. You don't got this. You got that. How many know we can get excuses all day long? But I actually believe that I could do all things through Christ Jesus. And it's kind of a it's funny thing in that scripture. It, 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 I can do all things through Christ Jesus. It's through Christ. But also, I got to believe in myself that I could do it with Jesus. It says, I can do all things through Christ. I can do all things. I can do all things. Yeah. I can pray over someone that's in a wheelchair and they can pop out of a wheelchair in Jesus' name. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah, we can start churches all over the world and be debt free with every property we owned. Through Christ Jesus. But God is saying, do you believe? See, the only difference really between successful people and us, or I, or you, or anybody, success, they believe they can do it. They believe that anything is possible. But sometimes Christians, we have a hard time believing it. If we really believe in the gospel, we really believe there's a heaven and a hell, how come we're not soul winning? I believe hell is real. Anybody believe that hell is real? Well, if you believe that, tell everybody that if they don't have Jesus, they're going to hell. That they need Jesus. I believe in a real heaven. I believe one day I'm going to walk the streets of gold. I'm going to hang out with Jesus all day. I believe that Jesus came and died on the cross. I believe on the third day he rose again. Have I seen Jesus? No. Which I can't wait to see him. How many can't wait to that glorious day? I haven't seen him, but I believe in him. I haven't seen heaven, but I, I believe in heaven. It's more real than me and you sitting here, like I said earlier. I believe in hell. I believe in a place in hell that if somebody doesn't receive Jesus, they go to a literal hell. I believe we can do all things through Christ Jesus. And you say, well, pastor, my belief is a little low. How do I build my faith? How do I, how do I build my faith? Write this down really fast. How do we build our faith? If you have your Bibles, turn to Romans chapter 10, verse 16 and 17. Let me show you how we build our faith. How do we build our faith? How do we, how do we build this belief system that we have in Christ? Romans 10, verse 16 to 17. You have that scripture? Media team, look at this scripture. You can look at it on your laps there on your phones or on this screen. I chose a New King James Version just like the way it says it in this version. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed in our report? So then faith comes by hearing and hearing of the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing of the word of God. Just by being in service today and underneath the word of God and hearing the word of God, your faith is being built. You went to the spiritual gym tonight and you're doing some reps. I don't like the gym. <laughs> Because I know I got to do reps. I got to put on more weight. And I congratulate you guys. Here on a Wednesday night, building your faith. Give yourselves a round of applause. You're building your faith. <laughs> Write this down. And that only stops there by hearing the word. Write this down. How do we build our faith? Number one, yeah, hearing the word. How do we build our faith? Number two, how do we build our faith? By doing the word. Don't be hearers only, be doers of the Word of God. See, when you do the Word of God, you're going to get the results of the Word of God. And once you get the results of the Word of God, you will be addicted to the Word of God. Because the Word of God produces kingdom results. How many want kingdom results? So how do we build our faith? Hear the Word. What's number two? How do we build our faith? Look at your neighbor and tell him, you got to do the word. You got to practice it. No, tell him again because they didn't get it. Tell him, you got to practice this stuff.
No, tell him again. He ain't got it. Just... <laughs> we got to do the word. And I promise you, when you do the word, you're going to get the results of the word. And not only this, you hear the word, you do the word, and now we teach the word. That's how our faith gets built. I hear the word, I do the word. Then I teach the word. That's where our power of 12s come in. That's where the one-on-one -on -one conversations come in. Everything, this is a Pastor Marco quote, I love it. Everything you, everything that you teach, you own. It's a good saying. Everything you teach, you own it. So not only do I hear the word, I practice the word. Not only do I practice the word, now I teach the word of God. How many believe in the word of God? How many believe that the word of God has great results? Well, let's do the word of God. Don't question the word of God. You're sleeping with your boyfriend today. Quit sleeping with your boyfriend. All this common law marriage stuff. Well, we're common law married, pastor. Well, you're going to common law your marriage right out of the access of the kingdom of heaven. <laughs> Do it according to the word of God and watch your life succeed. Here's a few areas that we got to believe in. Write this down. Believe that heaven is accessible to us on earth. We're talking about access granted. Believe that heaven is accessible to us on earth. Matthew chapter 6 verse 9. In this manner, therefore, pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. We have access to heaven on earth. How many believe that? We have access to heaven on earth. I have access to his freedom and his joy and his peace. Here's another thing we got to believe in. Believe that heaven will respond. Believe that heaven will respond to our will, agreement, and prayers on earth. Believe that heaven will respond to our will, agreement, our prayers on earth. Matthew chapter 18, verse 18 says this, I promise you, that God in heaven would allow whatever you allow on earth, but he will not allow anything that you don't allow. I promise that when any two of you on earth agree about something you are praying for, my Father in heaven will do it for you. Soon as we pray, the Holy Spirit and angels and God begins to move. Because here's a question. When is, when, when, when is my prayers answered? When are my prayers answered? When I see it? Huh? Soon as I ask and believe, my prayers are answered. I remember when we got on this property. My mom seen this building in her dreams. She's seen it. She said, Pat, it's Marco Rob, it's right off the freeway. It's a big warehouse. It's there. Man, we're searching and looking. And then one day, Marco says, hey, Pastor Mark, let's go look at some buildings again. And we thought maybe it was the Lowe's over here in the corner. I heard that went out of business. I said, maybe it's the Lowe's. But man, as soon as my mom prayed for this building, it was already done. So then we pass Lowe's and we see this building. We're outside. I'm looking through the gates. I'm looking at me and Pastor Marcos. Oh my gosh, this is it. This is it. Access has been granted. We already prayed for it. It's done. It's done. As soon as we pray, it's done. So we were outside the gates there, me and Pastor Marco, and we see the security guard walking on this side. I said, hi. Hey. He's all what? He's like, come over here. And he goes to this gate over here. I said, can you open up this gate? He said, who are you guys? 
I said, I just, we just want to see the building. We're looking, we're looking for a church. We just want to see it. He didn't know we already prayed. He didn't know we already had access granted. He didn't know that we serve a heavenly father that could provide all of our needs. He didn't know that we could do all things through Christ Jesus. So he opens this place up. This was all cubicles and stuff and all kinds of walls. And we walked in this part, in this area, just me and Pastor Marco. And we said, oh my gosh, this is going to be the future sanctuary. Oh my, we'll raise the roof and we'll, we'll take out all these cubicles. Because we already prayed, we have access to it. This is it. This is it. Mama, this is it. Uh, called Veronica, we called Lisa. Oh my gosh, this is it. I asked the guy, I don't see a for sale sign outside. Who owns this thing? He said, well, I don't know. You, you got to look on that on your own. I just, I just security on this place. So we started doing some research. We find out who the owner was. We find out who the owner was. Multi-millionaire guy in Hollywood. And we said, let's have a meeting with him because this is our place. Because access has been granted. God already said it. All I got to do, all we got to do is believe. But the enemy will attack you now. Don't get me wrong. We had our first meeting with the owner. And we walk in. <laughs> That's right. We walk in. He just stands up. Comes into the room. The owner. What are y'all doing here? He said, well, we're, we, we're interested in your building. How much money you got? Just like that. And I. And he walks out, and he tells his secretary, who got these guys in this room? Said they wanted to build it over there on Hallmark. They don't got no money. He tells his secretary, then he walks back. And he just comes up with a number, it's 12 million. You guys could do 12 million? And we're like, no. <laughs> but he didn't know the access had already been granted. He really didn't know who he was talking to. He was talking to children of Jesus, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords that owns everything, that owns everything. The world belongs to Jesus. The access has been granted. He goes again, basically cusses out his secretary and said, don't ever have these guys come to my office again. He didn't even say bye. He just walks out of the door. And me and Marco just sitting there, me and Pastor Marco, I was like, whoa, that didn't go well. And our wives started calling, how did it go? I said, man, it was horrible. The guy spent 20 seconds with us and kicked us out. It was horrible. But on the way home, we had to be reminded that access had already been granted. So we even had to change our verbiage. People would call and go, oh, it went good, man. Just a little, little bump of the road, that's all. We're going to get this building. You got to watch what's coming out of your mouth once access has been granted. Don't cancel out your miracle with your mouth. Don't cancel your miracle with your mouth. So long story short, we had three meetings with this guy. The last meeting, man, he put out the red carpet. He looked at our website and God started to touch his heart. God touched his heart. And the last meeting, what can you guys afford? What are you guys thinking? Let's come up with a number. I'm here to work with you guys because God touched. Now, some of us, there's, a, there's doors that are shut and they're shut for a reason. Don't open that door, let God open that door. If you try to open that door, access denied. When we try to open up our own doors, access denied, can't go through. But when Jesus opens up the door, he touches this guy's heart, and here we are about to put this building in our name in less than two months. Give Jesus a shout of praise. Access has been granted. Access has been granted.
Thank you so much for tuning in to today's message. We pray that you were encouraged and empowered. Don't forget to check out some other messages we have on our YouTube channel and share, subscribe to thewayworldoutreach.org. We love you. God bless you. Have an amazing week.